Thank you very much. When I came here this morning, I wasn't aware that I'm going to give a quick uh, talk presentation. So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, what is code and what code has to do with, with blockchain and blockchain research. So um, I'm Peter. I recently joined Code University of Applied Sciences. We are a um, private state accredited University of Applied Sciences, about 500 meters from here into that direction. Uh, 400 students, three study programs, software engineering, product management, interaction design. And um, part of my new job is also to cultivate and to build um, blockchain from an educational perspective. Before I was a postdoctoral researcher mm. at uh, Technische Universität Berlin and Telekom Innovation Laboratories, also here in Berlin, doing blockchain analytics. Um, and in case you haven't heard about code before, um, uh, code is basically trying to do a lot of things um, new and better when it comes to education. It's about self-directed project-based learning in interdisciplinary teams and uh, code is also very deeply embedded into the Berlin ecosystem of companies so that students basically can choose their own problems uh, working on them. And we, the professors, are more acting like mentors or consultants to the students and helping them learn um, along the way. Um, and what I would like to do in the next few minutes is to introduce you to some of the work I also did in the past and I'm currently working on. One example is uh, called the Token Gallery. You can also open this uh, in a browser. And this is uh, an example for an analysis of um, token transfers on blockchains. And here you can see a visualization of about 1,000 different token networks in which we can um, observe different transactional patterns where um, tokens are being transferred between different addresses. Some of these tokens are being traded on major exchanges. And um, by just browsing through this list, you can go already just by looking at these patterns, guess that um, tokens, different tokens, are being used in different ways somehow. We can see some I mean, obvious patterns like this. This is probably a failed airdrop, so not a lot of activity here. We can see some fractal patterns down here. They typically come with uh, uh, burning tokens um, somehow. We can see some quite obvious structures um, maybe over here where we have one big exchange uh, involved and we have uh, a couple of uh, bigger hub and spoke patterns. Um, but there are also some patterns that can't really be explained so far. So if you're interested and want to learn more about this, go to tokengallery.net um, and you can yeah, basically find, uh, find more um, at this website. Now, um, I just wanted to point out that when it comes to analyzing token networks nowadays, um, that it is, uh, it's first of all, fascinating. I mean, this is very nice, very colorful. Um, but also, if we went more deeply into the network and the graph theory behind, we would find that um, many of these structures are very new. We haven't seen them before. If you do social network analysis, if you look into communication networks, if you look into transportation networks, the structures in these graphs are different. And these are new patterns that we can now see emerging from the usage of tokens on blockchains. Um, and no matter whether this is about, for example, a token that is used to play poker online or someone deploying a test smart contract uh, on, uh, on the blockchain um, or, again, a failed airdrop over here, um, these are all um, new patterns and that is, from a research perspective, of course, fascinating to um, analyze and to observe, first of all. But it is also interesting maybe for future applications to look into how tokens are actually being used and what we can learn from these patterns. Um, yeah, there are many of these uh, visualizations available. Just feel free to go there and look, look around. And a second topic I would like to very briefly mention is also the topic of blockchain governance. And here you can see a recent visualization um, where um, 
atom tokens on the, on the Cosmos blockchain are being delegated by the token holders to validators so that these validators can, to, can take the delegated tokens and then get elected to uh, create new blocks on the blockchain. And um, by just looking at this, again, this is just a high-level visualization, but we can, uh, first of all, I apologize for the low resolution. It's, I think, better if you go online later on. Um, but you can already see that in time there are some burst events where massive redelegation of tokens uh, happen at some point in time, in, in indicated by blue lines now. Um, probably this was some real-world event happening. Many people reconsidered their delegations. And this is, of course, also interesting if you ask who's actually in charge, who's actually in control of a blockchain. If you look into token delegations, redelegations, proxy votes, and the ultimate question, who is controlling the blockchain? So these are questions we are, we are currently um, dealing with. We are, we are looking into analyzing these networks. Um, and I'm basically here today to say uh, that you are welcome to join this discussion if you're interested in these topics. And the last thing I would like to briefly mention is um, that there is also a conference upcoming, which uh, I'm one of the organizers. It's IEEE DEPS. It's going to take place in April in Oxford, UK, next year. Uh, it's a second edition of a uh, conference on decentralized application. And the submission deadline is uh, the end of this month. So if you have something, uh, some ongoing work you would like to submit, you're very welcome. And hopefully um, see you in Oxford. These are my uh, coordinates. And um, feel free to contact me if you like. I'm also be around uh, only today, unfortunately, not tomorrow. Um, and now I'm open for a couple of questions. Thank you very much. Have you tried to apply any like your like token governments model within a quad university, within within uh, quad Berlin? Well, one of the ideas is now to build some environments and some structures at code. Um, first of all, to make students able to quickly learn about these concepts. But we are also thinking currently about what kind of processes we could possibly integrate and enrich. We are by means of DLTs. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no decision has been made yet, but we are actively thinking about it. Okay, thank you. How do you know that the airdrops failed? Because the tokens didn't move, or? Because there was no usage anymore ah, yeah, yeah, at some point yeah. in time. So basically, yeah. usage was, was dead. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.